Hello there, and welcome back to the channel. I'm updating my Swift Concurrency book, and that means that I'm making all kinds of decisions on what I do want to have in the book and what I don't want to have in the book. I had my testing chapter for the Swift Concurrency book written with XC Test, which of course made perfect sense when I wrote the book uh, one and a half years ago, but Apple announced Swift testing recently, and I decided that I was going to use Swift testing in the book. In this video, I'm going to talk about a particular case that I found interesting as I was converting my tests from XC Test over to Swift testing that wasn't quite covered in the migrating guide that Apple has, which I'll show you in a moment. So if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that right now. Make sure you get notifications and all of that stuff because I will be talking about Swift testing more. This is my first video on Swift testing and it's immediately going to be one that hopefully covers a situation that you might encounter. So what happened for me is I had a completion handler based API, right? We all do that in our code bases because we're not all full all in on Swift concurrency. And so I had something that had a completion handler that would be called at some point in time. Now, what I found is that Apple has a migration guide to go from XC tests where we tested things with expectations over to Swift testing. So here's what that migration guide looks like. Uh, when we scroll all the way down, we'll eventually find that Apple has a conversion suggestion for asynchronous behaviors. And they mention XC test expectation here, which is perfect. That's exactly what I was using. And so I scrolled down a little bit. And of course, I didn't fully read this because the solution, is, once I carefully read this, everything is, um, is in there. Um, but I, I looked at this code and I saw that Apple has this example right here, right? So they have a before situation where they had a test, they had some event handler, which was very similar to what I had, and then they awaited some code. I didn't have an await, but this looked similar enough. And then their suggestion is to do something like this using a confirmation, right? So Apple uses a confirmation object to uh, convert from XC test over to Swift testing and validate some asynchronous behavior. Now, again, obviously I didn't fully read the document. I was going quick and I've just moved. Um, I just wanted to move my code over, right? So let's take a look at what I had opening Xcode and we'll see what I changed it to be. So going into Xcode, I have this synchronizer object and this is sort of a, a distilled example of what I might have in the real world. So this example has a completion handler. Whenever I call this synchronize function, some asynchronous work kicks off. I can't await it because it's in its own task. Uh, I fake some delay to make sure that my tests are actually going to fail if something uh, runs asynchronously. And I have this list of news items. And then after I make the list, I call my own complete so that I know that everything is done. Pretty simple, um, really only meant so that I can quickly write a test for it. So then I had this test right here, the synchronizer XC test version. And this test uses an expectation, it creates my synchronizer, it has a non-complete, XCT assert, and then it fulfills an expectation. Then I call the synchronizer and I wait for expectations and eventually this on-complete will run. We'll run the test right now so that you can see that it actually works. It succeeded, there we go. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. So then when I went to migrate this over to Swift testing, what I did was I went on ahead and I followed Apple's example pretty much to the letter. So what I actually did is I had an async test or a func test on complete. I made that asynchronous. Then I said await confirmation. All right, I gave that a comment, um, something like expected to complete. And then I had this closure that received a uh, confirmation confirmation and, and then I more or less copied what I did here, right? So I have my synchronizer dot on complete and the synchronized function. So I call those in here and then instead of fulfilling my expectation, I figured I would have to call my confirmation. Right, instead of XCT assert, I would do an macro expect some condition 
And I was thinking that this would work, right? Sort of me trying to move quickly, expected this to be perfectly fine. Uh, and the test actually succeeds, so that is a little bit strange. Oh, we have this function in here that we did not actually need. This is what the test should look like. Silly me. Okay, so we've run the test now. And the test will actually fail. And this test actually fails because I have my function, I await the confirmation, and I do the work. And it says this confirmation was confirmed zero times, but it expected to be confirmed one time. So that's bad. So at this point I was like, okay, so what am I doing wrong? And I went to Google and I started looking around a little bit, and then I figured out that Apple actually says here that the requirement is expected to be confirmed before the confirmation returns. So we are waiting uh, for something asynchronous to happen, but we can't fulfill our, our confirmation before the closure completes. And that's when I found out that this await that Apple has is actually the whole key of why this thing works at all. And then actually I read the whole thing closer and then Apple actually said, uh, for a function that takes a completion handler, but which doesn't use await, a continuation can be used. Right, I also posted this on social media and a couple other people told me this. So that's when I decided, okay, let's let's move on to a continuation and that would actually work. So if we want to test something that takes a completion handler, we can do await with checked continuation. We'll pass that a closure and we'll get a continuation here. Uh, and then we actually just copy this over. Right? We can do the exact same work but in our completion handler, we're going to say continuation.resume. And that will tell the system that our test has completed. So if I run this now, this actually works and I have successfully tested that my asynchronous work completes. This is really good. Um, I don't mind this at all. I think this API, when you think about it, kind of makes sense. I was hoping that the confirmation API would work um, in this way, but I guess the Apple decided to not do that because they already have continuations and I guess for them it made sense to do it this way. Now, this approach works really well for what I wanted to do, but there are cases where this approach might not work. Like for example, you might have some code where you have an explicit timeout on your expectation that you feel is needed because your test might otherwise hang forever. If you want that, there are some people that have been working on this kind of stuff. And there are third party options here. One that I liked because it, it mimicked the, the whole API from wait for expectation. And simply because I, I gave it a quick try and it worked perfectly fine. I haven't done extensive testing for this. So I can't vouch for this um, in the long run. So of course, make sure you do your own testing and your own checking here. But this uh, snippet from Alejandro Ramirez uh, has a wait for expectation uh, function that is asynchronous and pretty much sort of um, mimics the usage that you would have with XC test, right? So we can write uh, wait for expectation, give it a timeout and a description, and then do whatever work that we need to do. So we can write try await wait for expectation. Um, and in this closure is where we would do the work and you would return uh, if everything went well. So this works, um, it's interesting. Um, you should go find Alejandro on, uh, on Twitter or X if you want to give him a follow because I feel like this work is really nice and should be useful. That said, if you're confident enough that your code is not going to need um, a timeout, like I did in this case, you can use a checked continuation to quickly converge your tests from XE test to Swift testing if you have completion handlers and don't have anything to await. If you have something to await, then Apple's uh, suggestion with confirmation, of course, is perfectly fine. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and enable notifications for future videos. And then I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.